Fortunately for classical Hodgkin lymphoma, we have a number of effective therapies and most patients will be cured of their disease. However, it's very important for each individual patient uh, to identify their comorbidities, uh, to take into cons uh, consideration aspects such as their age and performance status, uh, as well as a number of other uh, things that you may want to consider, like whether or not, for example, they're a smoker and might be at increased risk for pulmonary toxicity, or a diabetic that may be at increased risk for, for neuropathy. And so I often try to take into account a number of factors, both with regards to the disease as well as with regards to the patient when making a decision. So fortunately, we have a number of effective therapies. Uh, traditionally, the treatment for advanced stage Hodgkin lymphoma was a four-drug regimen, ABVD, uh, which was the standard for many years. And this is typically a therapy that's given every other week for six months of treatment or, or 12 treatments. This is typically well tolerated, uh, but one of the big challenges with this particular therapy is that the bleomycin uh, can certainly uh, increase the risk of pulmonary toxicity, which can be a devastating complication for patients with classical Hodgkin lymphoma. So in recent years, there's now been two subsequent studies that have identified alternative options for patients with classical Hodgkin lymphoma. The first is, a, uh, is based on a study called the Rathol study, uh, which used a PET adapted approach to manage patients with classical Hodgkin lymphoma. In that particular approach, patients receive four treatments with ABVD, or two cycles, and at the conclusion of those two cycles, they have a PET CT. And those that are PET negative at that point can move on to receive AVD without the bleomycin for an additional four cycles, whereas those that are PET positive uh, would be escalated to be a cop, which is a more aggressive therapy that was primarily developed in Europe. This is particularly attractive because it allows uh, patients to uh, uh, receive a, a lower dose of bleomycin. Uh, the challenge, however, is that if a patient is PET positive, escalating to be a cop can be a very aggressive uh, intervention and can sometimes be challenging. In, ad in addition to that approach, we also now have a novel combination, uh, which includes the antibody drug conjugate brentuximab vidotin, which targets CD30, in combination with AVD. And this regimen uh, is now FDA approved uh, based on the Echelon 1 study, which was presented at ASH in 2017 and subsequently published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And this was a comparison of BV-AVD versus ABVD for six cycles. And uh, this also provides an opportunity to avoid bleomycin. Uh, it, what we found was that in the study that there was an improvement in the modified progression-free survival. Uh, this modified progression-free survival includes those patients that progress or that die from other reasons and also includes a, a small number of patients that may not have progressed but had an inadequate therapy and ultimately went on to receive additional treatment. And the idea behind including that endpoint was that these were patients that had not necessarily been successfully treated with the induction regimen. So it was a goal to really be more realistic with the uh, assessment. So these are two very uh, uh, reasonable options. At this point, I typically do not recommend ABVD for a full six cycles and go with one of these two tr uh, treatment options.